Bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless. Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. As always, let me start the video by saying thank you so much for taking the time to watch our videos, for being here with us, and hopefully you'll learn a lot from what we've put together for you. Anyway, for this video, there's something that I'd like to share with you about the late Father Gabriela Morth. As someone who had performed thousands of exorcisms in his lifetime, I've learned a lot from reading his books and other writings about him. Quando lei ha parlato con il demonio, per quanto schivo a lasciarsi andare a parlare, le ha parlato dell'inferno. Sì, le molte detto, volte. Le ha detto che cos'è. Quello che ci è stato raccontato dell'inferno attraverso l'opera straordinaria di Dante Alighieri o quello che ci è stato raccontato dalla Chiesa durante il catechismo, eccetera, ha una corrispondenza con quello che il demonio ha avuto maniera di poterle raccontare, se lo ha fatto? Una certa corrispondenza, però devo dire che siccome si tratta di una realtà dell'inferno assolutamente diverso dalle nostre cognizioni, dalle nostre conoscenze, direi che anche nelle apparizioni dell'inferno a persone sante assume sempre delle fattezze, diciamo, di, di comodo, si adatta, si ad, il Signore permette qualche volta che si adatti alla conoscenza, alle possibilità delle persone. Non so, le faccio un esempio, il, la pagina del giudizio universale a destra, a sinistra, venite benedetti, via da me maledetti, avverrà veramente così? Io penso che sia sostanzialmente così, ma come Gesù si esprime, si esprime in un modo adatto alla nostra comprensione. Anche le descrizioni dell'inferno, come noi possiamo avere, sono adattate alla nostra comprensione, non sono in realtà così. Il demonio più volte ha detto ad esempio questo, il fuoco, c'è il fuoco nell'inferno, è un fuoco che brucia immensamente di più del fuoco vostro, non ha niente a che fare col fuoco vostro. Pur essendo fuoco, non è un fuoco simile al nostro fuoco, non è una combustione. La, probabilmente il fuoco della coscienza, il fuoco del rimorso, il fuoco del dolore. Fuoco del rimorso, del, un fuoco tremendo che tormenta le persone, eh, se gli uomini pensassero di più all'esistenza dell'inferno, peccherebbero di meno, di sicuro. According to Father Amorth, the same demon can be present in more than one person. To elaborate further, Father Amorth in his book, An Exorcist Tells His Story, Father Amorth shared the case of the demon who possessed a girl, and the demon said he would leave her that night. But Father Candio Amantini, Father Amort's mentor, knew that the demons almost always lie. During the exorcism performed by Father Candio, the girl would twist and turn and fall to the ground, but at the last moment before hitting the floor, she slowed down as though a hand was holding her up and would never hurt herself. After working on her without any result all evening and half the night, Father Candio decided to quit. The following morning, however, as Father Candio was exorcising a small boy, six or seven years old, the devil from within that boy began to mock the exorcist and said, Last night you worked hard, but you did not gain anything. We won, and I was there too. There was another case that Father Amorph recalled in the book involving another girl, and while Father Candio was exorcising the girl, the exorcist asked the demon his name, and the demon answered, Zebulun. When the exorcism was over, the priest sent the girl to pray in front of the tabernacle and called for the next girl to come in to be exorcised, and again Father Candido asked this demon for his name. The answer was the same, Zebulun. The priest asked, Are you the same demon who possessed the other girl? If you are, give me a sign. I command you, in the name of God, to go back to the girl you just left. The new girl uttered a sort of howl and then became quiet and appeared calm. In the meantime, the people who were in the room heard the girl who was praying at the tabernacle take up the same howl. Then Father Candido ordered, Come here again. And immediately, the new girl began the same howling, and the other girl began to pray again. Father Amorth explained why Father Candido preferred to ask the children who are possessed to determine whether they need exorcisms because possession is evidenced by some profound answers, especially when given by children, because it was obvious that their answers were well beyond their age and therefore proved the certain presence of the devil. There was a time when Father Candido asked an 11-year-old boy some tough questions after he became convinced of the presence of a demon. 
The exorcist asked, On earth there are many great scientists, some very fine intellects, who deny the existence of God and your existence. What do you say to that? And the boy immediately answered, Those are not very fine intellects. They are very fine mediocrities. And Father Candido added, referring to the demons, There are others who knowingly deny God with their will. What do you call these? The small possessed boy jumped up in fury. Be careful. Remember that we wanted to reclaim our freedom even before him. We told him no forever. Father Candido continued asking, Explain to me what is the meaning of reclaiming your freedom before God, when you are nothing if you are separated from him, just as I am nothing. It is as though, in the number ten, the zero wanted to be separated from the number one. What would it become? What would it accomplish? I command you in the name of God, tell me what you achieve that is positive. The demon, full of anger and fear, would twist, drool, and sob in a horrible way, and said, Do not test me like this. And in another case, Father Candido was exorcising a 17-year-old girl. She was a peasant who spoke the dialect of her town and her Italian was very poor. Two other also priests were present for the exorcism, and once the presence of the devil was ascertained, the two priests continued to question her. Father Candido, while reciting the Latin prayers, began to add these Greek words, Shut up! Quit it! Immediately the girl turned toward him and said, Why are you commanding me to be quiet? Rather, Tell that to these two who continue to ask questions. One day, Father Candillo asked a 13-year-old girl, two enemies who hated each other all their lives, hated each other to death, and both ended up in hell. What is the relationship that they will share now, since they will be with each other for all eternity? And this was the answer given by the demon. How stupid you are. Down there, everyone lives folded within himself and torn apart by his regrets. There is no relationship with anyone. Everyone finds himself in the most profound solitude, and desperately weeps for the evil that he has committed. It is like a cemetery. And so for the last part of this video, I'd like to share with you an audio clip of Monsignor Rossetti praying for us and cast out the demons of scrupulosity, the demons of self-torture. I'm saddened uh, to hear recently how many people uh, struggle with feeling forgiven. They, they feel uh, tortured by a sense of internal guilt, like God can't forgive them, they can't forgive themselves. And they're hanging on to this guilt and, and are tortured. I, uh, uh, this does not come from the Lord. Uh, this is the evil one. The evil one wants us to make the, us think that we are not forgiven. God doesn't forgive us. And he tortures us. So let's open our hearts now and pray that the, the, the healing mercy of the Lord would touch our hearts and heal us. The Lord wants us to live in peace with him and to know that we are loved and forgiven. So let us pray. Repeat after me. In the holy name of Jesus, I cast out the demons of scrupulosity. I cast out the demons of self-torture. I cast out the demons of excessive guilt. In Jesus' name, I reject them. I rebuke them and I renounce them. In Jesus' name, I cast them out. And now I'll pray. In the holy name of Jesus, I witness your rejection of these evil spirits. I cast out the demons of scrupulosity, of unforgiveness, of self-torture and self-hatred. In Jesus' name, I cut you free from these evil spirits. And in Jesus' name, I cast them out. In his holy name, I cast them out. And now repeat after me. In the holy name of Jesus, I open my heart. I welcome God's love and forgiveness. I accept God's forgiveness. I let go of the guilt. I forgive myself. And now I'll pray. And may the love and mercy and forgiveness of God wash over you, wash over your heart, wash over your mind. May you be healed. May you be at peace. And may Almighty God bless you this day and all days. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go and be at peace. Well, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our videos, and if there's any particular subject or person you'd like us to cover, please do let us know down in the comments below. Anyway, for those of you who'd like to support our works, I left a link to our PayPal donation down in the description box below. Thank you so much to all of you who have contributed before, and we really appreciate your continuous support of our works. Until the next video, stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless you.